good evening all uh, welcome to the new case of the month we will try to see an interesting case of uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension this case has a classic all the classic imaging findings of uh, iih so i wanted to present this case as case of the month so i'll tr try to show the video 30 year female with chronic history of headache blurring of vision in both eyes partial loss of vision in right eye and vomitings So we'll try to see the imaging findings in this case. So here we can see in this case there is a distension of the perioptic nerve sheaths. Classical there is distension of the perioptic nerve sheaths. So what is the cutoff value which we have to remember when we have to uh, think about distension of the perioptic nerve sheaths is when we are measuring 3 mm from the globe the upper limit maximum optic nerve sheath diameter that is ONHD threshold has ranged between 4.8 to 6.2 mm. So anything more than this is definitely abnormal and when measuring 8 mm from the globe on CT the maximum optic nerve sheet diameter is 5.8 mm and also in the coronal sections typically it is seen as a CSF ring around the optic nerves. So distension of the perioptic nerve sheets is an important imaging finding in IIH. Next optic nerve protrusion. So here you can see this is the normal flat optic nerve. This is the normal optic nerve head on the left side which is flat but on the right side you can see this on the right side you can see there is protrusion of the optic nerve head so optic nerve head protrusion on the right side which is nothing but classically as a known as and is classically seen in case of intracranial hypertension and it's one of the in clinical it can be seen as papilledema so optic nerve head protrusion is one of the important imaging finding next there is tortuosity or kinking of bilateral optic nerves you can see this is tortuosity this is tortuosity and and kinking of bilateral optic nerves and this tortuosity will be horizontal that is along the axis of the optic nerve and if it is vertical along the, which is perpendicular to the opt axis of the optic nerve which is called as vertical tortuosity so tortuosity optic nerve occurs because the optic nerve is fixed at its proximal and distal parts and increased csf pressure in the optic nerve sheath causes kinking or tortuosity horizontal tortuosity b is less common but more specific for increased icp than vert vert vertical tortuosity Next, vertical tortuosity is often accompanied by smear sign. So, this is nothing but the smear sign. In the mid, when, whenever there is vertical tortuosity, in the middle part of the optic nerve is covered by a smear of orbital fat, which is called as smear sign. Here also you can see this is the vertical tortuosity of the optic nerves, and in middle part of the optic nerve is covered by a smear of fat, which is called as smear sign. Next, there is this is called as buckling of optic nerves. So, this is horizontal uh, axis. This is buckling of the optic nerves, and even in the vertical axis here, you can see this is the vertical buckling of optic nerves. So, this is vertical optic of buckling of optic nerves, and horizontal buckling of the optic nerves can be seen in IIH. Next, empty cella. Here you can see this is the empty cella, classical empty cella. Uh, so empty cell occurs because there is herniation of the CSF into the pituitary pituitary that is cella with resorption of the pituitary and it can be uh, partial or complete Pri primary empty cell is occurrence of empty cell without any known pathology of pituitary gland which is associated with IIH whereas secondary empty cell occurs as a result of pituitary tumor head trauma surgery radiotherapy drug therapy and even Sehan syndrome. Next, in our case, it is partial empty cella because there is herniation of the CSF into the pituitary with residual pituitary gland seen on sagittal T1 weighted images. Next, posterior globe fattening. So, posterior globe fattening occurs at the level of uh, in the sclera at the level of optic nerve insertion. Uh, it is thought to occur as a result of elevated CSF pressure that is transmitted from the subarachnoid space through the optic nerve sheath into the posterior globe. So, this is the posterior globe fattening. This is also the posterior globe flattening. Next, enlarged Meckel's caves. Here you can see these are the enlarged Meckel's caves seen in our case. Next, the most sensitive and specific finding for in IIH is nothing but we have to definitely whenever we suspect an IIH on MRI brain along with the orbital sequences we have to take the MRV. So in MRV there is a lateral segments of transverse sinuses are stenosed. Here you can see this is the lateral segments of the transverse sinuses are stenosed. So, which is classical finding in IIH. So, bilateral transverse sinus stenosis greater than 50% in MRV is extremely sensitive imaging marker of IIH. Next, in our case, there is also there is brain herniation into the arachnoid granulation. 
here you can see this is the brain herniation into the arachnoid granulation here also you can see this is the brain herniation into the arachnoid granulation that is bhag i have already discussed in my previous uh, lectures so the bhag is also found in our case and also there may be herni in our case we also see herniation of the csf uh, along with brain along with the herniation of csf into the diploic space so herniation of the csf or brain tissue into the diploic cavity can be also described as intra diploic encephaloceles so we will try to sum up all the imaging findings we have seen in this case so the common imaging findings which can be seen in ihr distension of the optic nerve sheaths torsion or kinking of optic nerves optic nerve protrusion or papilledema buckling of optic nerves empty cella other uh, are partial empty cella posterior globe flattening enlarged mecal caves even venous anastenosis mrv which is the most sensitive and specific imaging finding uncommon findings can be prominent arachnoid pits or aberrant arachnoid granulations or small meningocoels typically within the temporal bone and sphenoid wing enlarged csf space around the oculomotor nerve in cavernous sinus slit like ventricles acquired tonsillar ectopia mimicking acm1 stylo stylodogenic jugular venous compression syndrome or bhag that is brain herniation into arachnoid granulation intra diploic encephalo seals and even increased subcutaneous fat thickness in scalp and neck because ih is more common in women and more common in obese patients in young women who are more obese are more prone for ih next these are the diagnostic criteria the opening cs of pressure should be greater than greater than 25 mm of h, 25 cm of h2o or if it is between 20 to 25 cm of h2o there will be at least one of these additional findings which is pulse synchronous tinnitus abscesses now palsy frisson grade to papilledema echocardiography negative echography negative for drusen or other disc anomalies lateral sinus stenosis or collapse partial empty cell and optic nerve sheaths filled with filled out css spaces next this is modified dandy criteria which has been updated for idiopathic intracranial hypertension treatment trial you can pause the slide and see the findings and so the key points in this case are uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension is a syndrome of elevated icp without any identifying brain pathology which is very important so there should not be any associated brain pathology or there should not be any secondary cause of raised intracranial pressure so then only we can call that case as idiopathic intracranial hypertension and with normal cerebrospinal fluid composition and diagnosis of ih requires exclusion of other secondary cause of raised icp like tumors infective lesions obstruction to cs of flow venous outflow like venous sinus thrombosis or even dural av fistulas mri along with the orbit orbit sequences and also mrv has to be definitely uh, uh, should be used and as a, which is an important tool in diagnosing ih which is because transverse sinus stenosis or lateral segments of transverse sinus stenosis is the most sensitive and specific finding in ih these empty cell atarsica all the findings we have already seen so this is the class i wanted to present this case because it has all the features of idiopathic intracranial hypertension so the pause the slide and see all the findings of idiopathic intracranial hypertension thank you all